You're watching Martin Roberts on my YouTube channel, Martin Roberts Brought you Tit Bits, and a new series I'm starting where I'm interviewing people who do what I advise people to do. People who are actually getting down and actually just making a success of being property investors, renovators, and people who I think are doing a darn good job of it. So our first one, I'm delighted to welcome Nick Morris. So you've been inspiring people by doing all these, uh, these, these projects on your YouTube channel. Tell me how it all started. Oh, well, um, I started off as an electrician um, back in 2009. Um, and then I just started falling in love with just properties and seeing things develop. I just love going into an absolute wreck of a property and even doing the electrics, just changing something from that's just highly dangerous and, and going to burn the house down. Right. OK. I mean, I have to say you look about 17 years old. So, <laughs> I, I, I get I get this an awful lot. I'm um, I'm 34 and I still can't grow a beard. So it's just, I think I'm always going to look baby faced, unfortunately. You, you still get uh, um, um, ID'd when you go to buy a drink in pubs and things. Oh, fortunately that era has passed because I've got a few gray hairs flying through now. So I think oh, this wow. is my ID now, but I used to get that a lot, much to the enjoyment of my friends. So what's the buzz about investing and developing property for you then? Like I said before, I really, really enjoy it. Just turning, I, we love buying the, the ones that are an absolute wreck where we think most people if, who are wanting to buy for themselves might be put off if you have to literally renew everything. They're the ones we really, really like. Um, and I just love that feeling of just seeing it before from when you bought it through the estate agent. And then when it goes back onto the market and you can literally just see the before and after. And it's just so exciting when then I've sold through a few estate agencies where you do the viewings yourself as well. Oh, right. um, so I really enjoyed that side of it because then actually you see people walk around and say, oh, wow, this is amazing. And then you can actually stay in contact with the eventual buyer as well. And they, we've had a few comments with just texts and things over the years saying, oh, we still love it here. Thanks so much. And it's just, it's, it's really, Obviously, you're in it for the money as well, but it's, I think it's really rewarding doing something up that not many people will, would want to go into, but we seem to enjoy it. You've never had somebody turn around and say, well, I'd replace that kitchen with the, <laughs> with the kitchen you put in. We have, had, we have had ones like that where they've oh, just no. completely ripped out the bathroom and done the new bathroom, but I guess it's people's tastes are different, aren't they? And like, what your taste might be different to others, but yeah, usually 99% of the time, people just love what we've done. Ah, oh, brilliant. So what, um, tell me about some of the projects you've undertaken and we're going to share a few pictures of the things you've done. Yes, so the first one we ever did was the one I was talking about earlier was in my mum and dad's road. That was a semi-detached house um, in 2011. Where did you get the first lot of money? Was it inheritance, did you say? Yes, so it was um, my grandparents' inheritance and then the rest through mortgage and savings. Right, because obviously um, that's the biggest question that people often ask, isn't it? It's like, I love to do this, but where am I going to get? you know, the first bit of money from. Exactly, and I think it, it would have been impossible without that, especially in 2011, maybe as the years went on, right. when we started developing our own businesses, but there's no way we would have been able to do that in 2011. Um, and on that one, we did a single story extension out the back wow. and a loft conversion and just redeveloped the whole house. And that's who, because that's not just, you know, doing a bit of rewiring, is it? That's major structural work. Did you, exactly. do that, did you do that yourself? Yeah, so um, we obviously we got builders in to do all the, the work, but um, oh, right. we were there project managing the whole thing. We basically, my mum and dad were always helping these projects, which is really handy because they're free labour and they're very keen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I'd rewired it um, with someone from my work overseeing that because I wasn't qualified then and right. they had to sign it off. and. Um, and then my brother would handle the exterior and um, the garden and the driveway. And then we just started trying to find tradesmen. So basically speaking to friends of friends who have used people. And we've sort of grown it from that. Um, and we were just a really lucky time. It was, that, it was a time in, in Kent where right. properties really boomed whilst we were developing it. And it was one of those that in hindsight, we could have just bought, kept, and it would have gone up a really good amount because it was just lucky. So. We managed to then, that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wish I hadn't sold that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and we just went from one to the to the other to the other, and and, and, and always you've always done them up and sold them. So that's just that's what that's the flip strategy, isn't it? That's the strategy. Yeah. Where you've never been um, sort of was it financial reasons why you decided not to keep any and rent them out, or 
Well, uh, at the start, I was just to, yeah, just to try and grow the pot, really. I, I do have a rental property as well um, that I've bought. Right. But that was just, that was a, um, we bought that brand new. Well, I bought that brand new. Right, okay. Um, it just felt like a really good deal. And I, I, I try and build a bit of a pot up to put into property. And then it's nice to have a rental income because it's much more steady than the developing. So how long was that project? So that one was just a year, the, the initial oh, one. Just yeah, it, it actually went pretty smoothly, yeah. <laughs> okay, so after that, on to the second one. Sold that one. Yeah. Use the money yeah. to buy what? Uh, so we then bought another one again in the local area. So we've always stuck to. Um, so we're based in the borough of Romley. Okay. So we've that always been really well there, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. So we've always stuck to that borough because we know it well. I have looked at other areas, but it's not just knowing that area well. It's knowing that your tradesman lives ten minutes away rather than an hour away, and people don't mind working late if they can get home quickly. We went from that one to another one around the corner, which was. Definitely a case of the worst house in a beautiful road. It was a it was a private road, but the negative to it, we were the first house in, and the road off of the private road was a really busy road. So it took about two years to sell it because it was constant loud traffic if you were in the garden. But the road itself just gets more and more magnificent as you go down it into million pound plus properties. Oh, right. so we, we thought it, it was a good buy and it, it turned out to be a fantastic buy, but it just took an awful long time to sell. So then that was that and then on to another one? I then bought one on my own for the first ever time and it was actually an auction inspired by Homes Under the Hammer none, hey. nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that was one I bought for two hundred and eighty-three thousand um, in in the borough of Bromley again, and I remember that not figure so well because my budget was two eighty, and I just oh. got that, I got that tiny bit caught up in the madness of the auction. Um, but fortunately, that's not too bad. And what was the tell me the numbers on that? So you bought it for two eighty three. You spent how, what, how long did that take? So that was that was just under about ten or eleven months again. So that was just a single story extension out the back and I ended up I did rather down so I sold this for 415,000 and I made about 65,000 so I spent about 67,000 on that um okay. just basically extending three meters out at the back permitted development yeah exactly and okay. then just renovating the whole thing so and, then, and and but what what made you decide to film all these because the good news is you did actually film some of these didn't you yeah and back then i didn't as well it, it, it's one of two things everyone always asks me it's so random they're like what do you do because i i was an electrician and then i sort of got into this property thing and then i'd work for my brother and the landscaping thing and randomly i also started a business when i was an, an apprentice electrician selling these these gloves for electricians so one of the main reasons I put it on YouTube is all of my girlfriend and now wife's friends at the time was always like, what do you do again? <laughs> because you seem to do half a dozen things here and there. Um, so that I, and I just thought it was a really interesting thing because YouTube has lots of, you know, plumbers, electricians, builders, but I don't see a lot of people doing the full flip, um, especially back three years ago when I started it, people filming the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest negative to it is I'm a complete technophobe and don't know anything about cameras and things like that. So I've had to learn that the hard way. Yeah, but you get a lot of people watching, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's just now you look back at the stuff you did three years ago and you're like, oh, the, the quality was really poor. <laughs> but uh, it, I'm getting better slowly. Yeah, well, people like to see that transition, I think. Yeah. Uh, so so um, for somebody sort of watching and thinking about doing this, then what, what sort of from your experience, what, what what tips would you hand hand on? I actually do think the auction, and I'm not just saying this because I'm speaking with you, is a good place, but it's one of those places as well that you sort of can get carried away at. So I think as long as you work out your budgets, but I've been to four auctions and bought properties at two of them and lost out on two of them um, just because they went so high. But personally, I think the best ones for me are the ones where they are a complete wreck, but there's room to expand so not just literally keeping it everything the same but buying it doing it up and selling it i think the best ones for me have been where you add an ensuite or you add make the bathroom bigger or you go into the loft just like because i once did a project and i literally kept the house exactly as it was and it was a, a wreck but and i just developed it as it was but just brand new and that was my most disappointing one profit wise and it took a long time to sell 
And I think with everything being online, with people can see what you paid for it when you bought it. So I think people can sort of see that, oh, well, you've only just sort of done it up and you haven't improved it dramatically. So I would go say the big, big one is room to expand and sort of improve the projects dramatically. And, you, and you've stuck very close to home. That's yes. good, yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely important. I, I, I have looked at other areas, but you just don't know because the borough of Bromley is actually quite expensive, which is one of the negatives to there. So I've looked at other areas um, such as down by the coast in Hastings and things, but it's one, not knowing if you'll get the money back and it's two, not knowing the tradesmen down there. And and I'm not sure my tradesmen will be willing to travel for an hour and a half. And so that, yeah, that's another important factor is location. Um, And of course you mentioned tradesmen there and that's, Getting good tradesmen is such a, such an important part of the whole thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like, once you've got a good team around you, um, did you make some mistakes with tradesmen? Oh, definitely. Yeah, we've 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 yeah, definitely we've we've chopped and changed over the years. Just to, some people are just unreliable, and some people try and sort of give you one job at a low price, and then they'll rack up the next price because they think they're going to get the work. So now we've got a really settled team, and it's really nice because it can just be as simple as a WhatsApp message now, and you'll have someone come over, give you a, a quote, and then give you accurate times. The, the thing that winds me up the most is. If someone say, oh yeah, I'll start Monday and they just don't start for weeks. So I'm really lucky the position I'm in now that most people are reliable. Well, that is great news. And of course, you being, you now qualified as an electrician. Yes. So in so terms that, of that's uh, great because it's one thing that, you know, a lot of people can obviously do a lot of DIY stroke minor building works, but of course you can't touch electrics and you can't touch gas. So the fact that you've, you've got that skill is quite a bonus, isn't it? Oh, definitely. It's, it's really, that would be another piece of advice. If you could have the time to go and learn one of these skills at night college or, yeah. you know, one day, my, my college was only one day a week. So it'd be oh, really great. Perfect. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was just a Wednesday afternoon, one day. And then I had an apprenticeship at the time. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. One Hyde Park in Knightsbridge. Oh gosh. The, the one by the Candy Brothers. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That, that, that was my apprenticeship. So. Oh my gosh. Well, wiring that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another set of electrically operated curtains. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that was insane. That would be like the studio flats would sell for sort of six million and then yeah, someone yeah. Would, rip, would rip out three years of your work and you'd redo it all. <laughs> it was just different world. <laughs> wow. How long did it take doing one day a week of, of night school to get so you? It was, three, it, was, it was three years. So the company three I worked okay. for, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are faster ways of doing it, but then that was the best way for me, learning on the yeah, job yeah. and going right. to college. So what's next then? Well, actually, um, coincidentally, I, I bought a bungalow um, in Bromley area again. Right. And work actually begins tomorrow. So oh, right. I've owned it since October, um, put in for planning permission to extend. Um, it's a really small fronted bungalow, but it's detached. Um, and I put in permission to go out the back, um, turn the dilapidated asbestos filled garage into two bedrooms at the side and then do a small loft dormer up in the loft as well. So that came back in January um, and then I've just been getting my ducks in line with money and builders um, and it literally starts tomorrow. Wow. Um, That's going to be interesting. I know about asbestos from you, but I've never seen the guys turn up in their beast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah and do it but um, that's definitely something you've got to do isn't it yeah yeah exactly and it's going to be quite difficult for them because the garage is propped right up against that attached house so i think they sort of have to be so careful i'm not even sure how they're going to do it i guess work out to in but i'm sure they know what they're doing yeah for sure so we'll see that in uh, in the coming months yeah great well listen uh, some 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 basic so final tips for for people again who are thinking about you know could I be the person who do this? You know, I mean, you know, did you have fears when you started out? Um, was it was it all plain sailing? I mean, what would you say to somebody who's thinking about this? Oh, definite fears because it's it's an awful lot of money and there's no guarantees that you'll do a place up and it will, you know, go up hugely in value and especially everything in the economy at the moment as well. You never know what's going to happen. But um, I've certainly made mistakes as well and. Um, like sort of not getting maybe multiple quotes when I've used someone before and then making that mistake and realizing they're overcharging you a bit things like that but generally most of my 
sort of feedback from doing it is positive. I, I, I absolutely love it. I, I even love the dirty work of just ripping out the kitchens and throwing, putting stuff in a skip is for some reason really satisfactory to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my major tip is to just do your research, like you guys say on Homes Under the Hammer and just really make sure that you you know the area well and you know what roughly what things are going to cost. And then I always add on whatever my estimated budget is i then add on like 15 percent as just standard because it's never ever on budget <laughs> of course not no <laughs> no but at least if you've uh, if you put it in there then you've got some <laughs> yeah. overrun well, it's brilliant so what's your channel called uh, it's called nick's home renovation nick's home renovation well, we'll check that out thank you lovely to talk to you good luck with the rest of the projects thanks very much martin cheers uh, that's nick morris on oh, master property tidbits Make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be back with more Property Heroes very soon.